Thank you. Wow, this is unbelievable. Um, thank you, everybody, for um, coming out. And um, first of all, Larry Tannenbaum, I think uh, Cynthia, CEO, is here. Um, to all the staff, everybody around, um, Bobby Webster, Teresa, Dan, uh, it's been an incredible uh, process for us. Uh, I know um, you have all been patiently waiting. Uh, some of you uh, impatiently waiting too. <laughs> um, but um, we're really, really excited uh, for this day. I know it's change, and sometimes change is hard, but we believe change is good, and change is uh, good for our ball club uh, and our organization now. And it's such an honor um, after a long process um, choosing uh, what we feel is the right fit and an incredible coach um, with great passion, uh, great knowledge, um, has been part of incredible programs um, to come and lead our, uh, our beloved Raptors here. And um, we're really excited uh, to welcome uh, Coach Dalcor. Welcome, man. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Please. I got, I got to take it in for a second. This, this, this is amazing. Uh, thank you, first of all, everybody coming out today. Like, uh, right now, I'm like that uh, duck on the, on the surface of the water that acts like everything is cool, but my feet are down there, like, working. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. Um, First of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Larry Tannenbaum and uh, his wife, Judy. I would like to th thank uh, Masai, Bobby, Teresa, Dan, um, Alex, everybody uh, from, from the organization. Uh, this is amazing, amazing privilege to represent uh, um, Toronto Raptors uh, championship organization. Uh, it's amazing uh, privilege to be part of uh, uh, such amazing roster. I would like to thank Joe and uh, Ron and Jeff and uh, Delano and Loco and all the guys over here that are here to today present, but also all other players that I, uh, I've been in touch last couple of days and talked to. Uh, this is definitely a very, very exciting moment and uh, with the North. <laughs> Masai, I know you touched on it, but at this time, you had so many candidates to choose from. Why did you feel that Darko was the right fit? Yes, we, we did have um, many incredible um, candidates, and we wanted to go through a process uh, here um, because of this, uh, where the stage at which our, our team is. And um, I think Darko just hit all of it, and um, depending on where... Um, our team uh, could be. Um, we're excited. We're excited to have uh, his knowledge, uh, his experience. Um, I think the study, being, being so studious of the game, his journey, um, diversity, everything, you know, like uh, to me, uh, his incredible family, Gaga. Um, it's to me, uh, it all comes together in some kind of way and um, the process was um, was long and tough, you know. Like, but we know we came uh, came up with the right um, uh, candidate here. I do want to thank Bobby, uh, Teresa, Dan, Keith, uh, Alex, the whole team. You know, um, I say it again. I think these guys do an incredible job with the process of um, uh, how we go through these things and all the information we need. And, uh, and also the leadership in our organization, the support we get, it's very important for us. Um, we know what our values are here. And like I said, change is good. You know, change is, is something that sometimes is tough. And um, we feel that uh, Darko um, fits it. It's a good time for the Serbs uh, right now. <laughs> you guys know. <laughs> I want to be a... you. Uh, Masai, 
you Jirianovic. That's what that's, that's that's what I want to be now um, with jack, um, tennis, uh, basketball. We saw Jokic yesterday, and now I bring this special guy here. So uh, oh, we're that's glad great. to have him. We have our own Serbian superstar. Yeah. Um, Darko, you're the second ever Serbian and European born head coach with the world breaking down barriers everywhere. What does this mean to you? Um, this means the world to me, uh, means uh, so much uh, to Serbian community uh, here in Toronto. A lot of people reached out to me. Uh, means a lot to, to uh, family back home and uh, whole basketball community in, in Serbia. Um, I started coaching when I was 16 years old, and uh, now some 27 years old, later, I'm uh, appointed to be a head coach of unbelievable organization and to, to uh, have a chance to live in an amazing city like Toronto is. And uh, I'm just proud to, to be over here today and uh, to represent. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Darko. Um, we'll now take questions from uh, members of the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand and a microphone will be brought to you. Please introduce yourself by stating your name. Uh, and your organization. Uh, Darko, it's uh, Doug Smith of the Toronto Star off to your left there. Um, obviously in 27 years as a head coach, you would have worked for very different kinds of people. How would, you, how would you describe your coaching philosophy and how you've grown as a man since you become now at 44? Um, since the day I started coaching, uh, for me the biggest thing that I enjoyed is seeing players get better, players improve. You know, you're going to win games, you're going to lose games. Uh, definitely, we want to win every, every single game, every single night. But say, seeing the team grow, seeing the players grow, seeing uh, uh, people in whole organization grow is something that always uh, was my uh, biggest award. And that's how I operate. I'm trying uh, to wake up every single day with that, that on my mind. How can I help? How can I serve? How can I improve uh, everybody in the organization? Question maybe for Bart Posey. I'll start with Darko. Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Just wondering, your Michael Grange from Sportsnet, <laughs> your connection uh, or relationship with Masai and, and maybe Bobby, whoever. How did uh, you guys arrive at this place? Uh, is it long-standing? And, and maybe Masai, uh, a little bit of how you uh, arrived at, at Darko and maybe where that relationship began. Uh, you know, run into each other in a uh, few places, and I, th I think uh, the admiration has always uh, been there. Um, when I was scouting and lived in Serbia, I never uh, met him at that, at that time. He was probably uh, too young. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, you know, this game takes us to incredible, incredible places, and... Um, uh, the the word always kept coming, you know, like to him, his name, um, and all our scouts, um, our representation from the teams have, it's all uh, intertwined in some way, you know, and it's all related in 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 some way, and um, and here we are, we find him, uh, we find we find him here. Yeah, I'm just wondering, so was it only during this process that you guys actually met and established a relationship, or was it longstanding before that? Um, we started uh, really to get to know uh, each other through the process, uh, but there was always uh, admiration on my side uh, for what Masai and Bobby and, uh, and Larry did uh, uh, with the team and how much passion and commitment they have to, uh, to run the things the right way. Uh, the first time that we started uh, talking on a Zoom call, what I felt from day one was like unity. And uh, everybody in the organization, you could just feel that everybody's together. And the um, very next conversation we had, I was blown away. I, when I flew over here to, to meet him in person, I, I, I needed to pinch myself, like uh, to, to be in the presence of the, the best president and the best GM and the best ownership in, uh, in, in the league is, uh, is, is a huge, huge privilege. And uh, 
I'm, uh, I'm just blown away from every day what I'm learning uh, about the organization and the team. You know, I just told Masai, like, last three days I had a smile on my face so much that my jaw started to hurt. So I'm really, really happy to be here. We haven't told him the bad parts yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Darko, Josh Lewinberg, TSN, welcome and congratulations. I, I know you started coaching at a young age. What, what drew you to coaching initially and who have been some of the bigger influences on your coaching style over the years? Um, so yes, since I started coaching, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a funny story. So uh, when I start, stopped playing, I was just like 15 years old. And uh, to be honest with you, like, the, it looked like the world crashed on me. Like I stopped like learning, you know, being good student. I, I, I lost my identity. And when my team organized the basketball camp in my hometown for, for little kids, uh, they invited me to, to uh, be there and coach those kids, uh, which started on August 2nd, 96. And uh, funny story is that one of the kids in that group actually was uh, the brother of my, my wife, Gaga. And that's actually how we started meeting. Uh, but uh, uh, the amazing thing is, uh, like, even with those kids that were like seven, eight years old, when I saw their improvement and, and how they grow and they got better, that's really what hooked me into the game. And over the years, I had such amazing, uh, tremendous, like, mentors. Uh, back in Serbia, great coaches. Uh, I had a great mentor with uh, Red Star Belgrade in uh, um, Marin Sedlacek, uh, who had great connections with the uh, United States and uh, working as a Nike camp director. He really approached me, uh, United States and NBA, and the way of doing things uh, overseas. And then over the years, <clears throat> I became very close friend to Željko Bradović, uh, Sergio Scariolo, um, Pablo Lasso, all the great coaches in Europe, and I was always learning from them. And then coming to the United States, I was just blessed. I was blessed to be part of the great coaching staffs and great teams to coach under um, uh, Scotty Brooks and to work with uh, for such an organization uh, like Oklahoma City that I had like, tremendous respect for, for Sam Presti and everybody there. It, all of the, the, these people made great, great influences on me as a coach. Uh, going to Phoenix and working with uh, Monty Williams and James Jones just got me to another level, learning uh, how different organizations operate. And uh, being last three years in uh, Memphis with uh, Taylor Jenkins and uh, Zach Kleiman and the team there, I just like completely like started embracing uh, the, the, the NBA and really seeing uh, that this can happen, that actually I can be here one day and being a head coach of NBA organization. So I'm very, very tr thankful and grateful for all the people in my life that helped me on this road. Hi, Darko. Welcome to Toronto, Aaron Rose, SI.com. Um, maybe the Raptors asked you this in your interview, but what do you see as your strengths as a coach and what are areas that you're looking to improve as you take over here? Um, I, see, uh, I see my love and the passion for game and uh, my commitment to the team as my biggest strength. This is not about me. This is about those guys. This is about the team, how we're going to get to the next level. My goal is not to get one player better, but all 17 players in the roster, how we can improve those guys and help those guys. Uh, so, so my core belief is when you improve players, like, then it's much easier to put strategies and tactics in, and that's going to give you a result. That's going to be your outcome. So uh, I always operate like that. Uh, for me, season does not start in October. For me, season start, started three days ago when I was appointed here as a head coach, and I'm trying to win every single day. You know, when we come in our practice facility on the board, we have a win, you know, for, for every day. And we need to win every day. It's not just about winning a game. It's winning, like, is Delano going to cut a little bit better? Is, are we going to move the ball a little bit better? Are we, are we going to be more together and more team? The more we have that, the better we're going to be, and, uh, and uh, that's going to make all of us uh, proud of our team. Hey, Darko. <coughs> Vivek Jacob, Raptors.com. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the importance of you know, building that relationship with the players. Uh, what do you feel are the keys to connecting with your players on a human level? Um, First of all, I want to be very invested in, in uh, them as a human beings and as a, 
I see as uh, every player is is a uh, uh, person uh, with uh, family, with uh, all what's going on in their lives. I want those guys to know and to feel that I really care about them, and I really want to connect uh, connect with all those those guys on personal level. You know, when they know that how much I love them and care about them. I have a strong belief that we'll be going to come together as a group and be ready to, to take it to another level. Hey, Darko. Uh, Ryan Wolstaff from the Toronto Sun. Welcome to Toronto. Congratulations. I'm just you. curious about uh, making the jump to the head coaching role. Um, what do you think of that transition and why you're ready for that? And what's going to change for you? Well, um, I was a uh, head coach for uh, 17 years before becoming assistant coach for the first time in, in NBA. So I was in that uh, hot seat for, for many, many years uh, overseas, coaching in Serbia, coaching in Spain, coaching in G League level. So I'm very, uh, you know, familiar with the look, what it looks like to be a decision maker. Uh, and to live that life uh, day in, day out. And last uh, um, uh, eight, nine years being assistant coach in NBA just helped me to see it from another angle. Then I have a, a, a deep trust and a commitment in, in the team, but also in the front office and working with Masai and Bobby and everybody in the organization. I know that we're going to be one, that we're going to be together and uh, that we will be able to elevate our team. Hey, Darko. Eric Corrine from The Athletic. Congratulations. Uh, what are your impressions of the roster as it is that you are going to be coaching? And what are some of the strengths that you're looking to highlight uh, with that roster? Um, I really like the roster, the way it's built. Um, every single day I'm getting to know those guys more uh, as a players, as, as, a, as a people. Um, I think that uh, Masai and, and Bobby and everybody did a tremendous job over the years and they proved that they have an amazing uh, talent uh, to, to recognize the right people and the right fits. And I'm really, really excited to get to work with those guys. Hi, Orrin Weisfeld, Yahoo Sports Canada. Darko, welcome to Toronto. Um, this organization has always been very international, both in its popularity and the people who work here, players, staff. I'm wondering what it means to you to coach the only organization based outside of the United States and to kind of help grow the game internationally. That's a great question, and uh, definitely it's it's a privilege to be part of uh, of the uh, organization like this with uh, such an international influence and uh, a lot of diversity that we have inside the city and inside uh, the organization and. Uh, that just proves how NBA is growing like 20, 30 years ago, it was kind of like you know, United States. Now it's a, such a global game, and uh, it is uh, um, the only NBA team outside of the U.S. Uh, being in Toronto over here. I could not dream about being in a better situation and in a better city to, to, to lead a team. Thank you. Uh, hello, Darko. Uh, by the way, I, I know Dani Gomez Otero. That I, uh, you, you were working uh, with him in Spain, in Espacio Torre Lodones. Yes. Uh, yes, my question is... Um, Related uh, with the last question, uh, uh, in terms of uh, European coach that uh, you have been, uh, uh, you have coached in Europe, uh, what, what can you give to the organization uh, um, from the European perspective in, in terms of the, of the game, uh, in the, in the, in the, the influence of, of Europe in the, in the game? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, as you probably know, to be a coach in, uh, in Europe, you got to go through school. And I finished the basketball school for coaches in Serbia. When I came to Spain, they made me go to school again. So <laughs> I had to do that this time in Spanish. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that I had a, a great uh, baseline to learn about biomechanics, to learn about sociology, to learn about uh, psychology, to learn about so many different aspects that are important for the game. So understanding uh, from that perspective how the game is, is played and developed, I think is going to be my uh, uh, big strength in working with everybody in the organization. And uh, I am Serbian and I'm an international coach with a broad uh, experience in NBA. Um, I always say, like, every time when the, my season is over, I go back and I watch uh, EuroLeague and I watch the best teams and learning from the best coaches. But I also watch college and learn from the best co co college coaches and I learn from NBA. Um, 
learning in this profession does not stop. And uh, I'm uh, eager to learn from uh, players, uh, from uh, my coaching staff, from people in the front office. As I said, it's not about me. It's about my daily approach, how I'm going to be get better so I can be better for the team. Hi, Coach Ryakovic. John Chidley Hill from the Canadian Press. Dobro došli u Toronto. Voila. Um, <laughs> thank you. I practiced. Um, <laughs> my question for you is, uh, just a couple months ago, Mr. Ujiri spoke passionately about the importance of culture on this basketball team. I'm curious, what kind of culture do you want to bring to the Raptors? Um, the most important thing for me is that it's going to be a uh, shared vision, you know, uh, knowing the team, uh, talking to Masai, talking to Bobby, talking to Larry. We really want to have an amazing group of people working together. Like that's, that's, and that's something that's off the court but also on the court. Uh, for me, culture starts with uh, your daily commitment to yourself and your team. And that starts with, uh, with me, starts with, uh, with players, starts with everybody in the organization. And uh, that unity and that trust that we're going to have between us, it, for me, is, uh, is, is everything. Hey, Darko. Samson Folk, Raptors Republic. Congratulations. Welcome to Canada. So this is a little bit more of a basketball encore question. I commend you on the conversations you've had publicly about implementing offense and talking about basketball for public consumption. Not that much of it is covered defense. What are some of the defensive principles that you have in mind for this team that can be acted by the players on the roster? Right. Um, defensively, I think uh, that one of, one of the strengths of this team is uh, the length that we have on the team and ability to do so many things from switching, from different coverages on the ball and off the ball. Um, for me, everything defensively starts with protecting the paint. If you protect the paint, after that, we're going to take away corner threes and we're going to have uh, late contested uh, wing threes. We can get in X and O's and I can draw you our schemes when we get a chance. <laughs> I would love to do that. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to talk with, uh, with our guys as well and see their comfort level with all of these things. Uh, all decisions that I'm going to be making, uh, I'm going to consult uh, with, with players and uh, people in the organization, with my coaching staff. Uh, so uh, don't worry, we're going to have really good defense. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, welcome to the city. Savannah Hamilton from Sportsnet. From your global perspective, how much have you seen the game stylistically change and grow? And where do you see it going, especially with this team? Um, game has changed so much, like uh, from 90s to uh, early uh, 2000s. Like even like when I came to the league 10 years ago, game was played play, played differently. Everybody talked about, oh, Serge Ibaka is uh, stretch four; he can shoot the ball. Now you have everybody being able to shoot the ball and put it on the deck and make plays. I think the game is going into that direction that, that everybody on the team gotta be able to do multiple things. I think that the uh, game is slowly disappearing like you're going to be like just defensive guy and knock down corner threes. I think that game and the way I see the game, I want all the guys to be involved in decision making and playing together and making each other better. Hi Darko, Fili Markovic, Serbian Toronto TV. Uh, I'll be switching to Serbian uh, for this part. Hopefully most of you understand me. <laughs> Uh, Dobrodošao Darko, prvo, uh, presreći smo što si ti naš novi trener. Uh, teo sam samo da pitam kakvi su ti prvi utisci Toronto, iako na kraju možeš samo da se javiš svim srpskim, srpskim gledalcima. Hvala puno, izuzetno sam uh, počastvovan i srećan da budem ovde. Um, znam da u Torontu ima, ima dosta Srba, koliko sam čuo nekih 50.000. I to je divna stvar jer uh, ceo grad je internacionalni grad, uh, Znate kako, tok, tokom sezone dođemo u hotel, autobus, utakmica, idemo dalje. A sada je ipak tu predivno vreme koje imamo danas a, priliku da uživamo i predivni ljudi u ovom gradu. Sve što čujemo u gradu su fantastične stvari i zaista se radujem da budemo ovde i da, da se družim sa, sa našim Srbima i sa svim ljudima u gradu. <laughs> We'll all be able to understand that fluently in a couple of years, Darko, honestly. Um, that concludes the, uh, let me get my, on the right page here.
Thank you for everybody for coming out. This is awesome. <laughs> this is that. This is really cool. Oh, this it is. is really cool. It is. Thank it's, you, Masai and no, Coach. It is. It is. I, I think we should really, really, like, honestly, like, appreciate this moment uh, with the Toronto Raptors because um, I think we've changed eras a couple times. We've cha made changes a couple times, but. Um, uh, I'm calling on all the fans, on everybody, people in the organization, everywhere, you know, like that. This is a time to follow. This is a time to support. This is a time to go. Let's go and win. You know, like it's, let's go and do it again. We saw this thing happen last night. We've done it here before, and we're going to do it again. Amen. Yeah.